Hello, and welcome back to the wonderful world of language arts. We've had a wonderful time, hopefully, in language this year and in the many other subjects. And uh, we are getting close to the end. We've learned many things from our dictionary friend here to many other things, subjects, verbs, predicates, d diagramming, adjectives, adverbs, all, all the parts of speech you know. And we have things like penmanship. I, I urge you to practice the craft of penmanship and make it important in your life as you go on to fifth grade and beyond to not forget. Go back and review. How do you make the letters? Don't forget. and Don't slip back into any bad habits that you may have. Um, it should just be natural now. And again, I haven't been there to see, but I do hope that you're doing a super job with that. So I'm just going to say keep practicing, practicing, practicing. See if you can make letters that look just like this. And you can you say, oh, I'm just not good. You can get better every day and you're your um, fine motor skills will get better and better too as you mature and uh, you'll do a super job with that. I also want to go over a few uh, vocabulary words as we continue our time today. So I'm going to be looking here and seeing if you just get, if you have a piece of paper, if you don't pause, just write down on a piece of paper what you think the answer is to the definition that I say. So number one, to struggle awkwardly. What does that word mean? To struggle awkwardly. Number two, not busy, not busy. That's number two. Number three, a desire to know something. A desire to know something. Number four, not planned, casual. Not planned, casual. Number five, a beast. A beast. Number six, irritating, causing problems. Irritating, causing problems. Number seven. The money left over after costs are covered. The money left over after costs are covered. Number eight. To want or long for. To want or long for. Number nine. Great destruction. Great destruction. Mm. Number 10, soft or light, easily broken. Soft or light, easily broken. Number 10, I believe that's all of them. All right, let's check your answers. Okay, exchange. <laughs> uh, number one, did you write flounder? Flounder is number one. Number two, idle. Idle. Number three, curiosity. Curiosity. Number four, haphazard. Haphazard. Number five, brute. Brute. Number six, bothersome. Bothersome. Number seven, profit. Profit. Number eight, desire. Desire. Number nine, havoc. Havoc. And number ten, delicate. Delicate. Raise your hand if you got a 100 on that. Raise your hand if you just missed one. Okay. Have you learned the words that will come across in your reading book. We're going to go to our reading book right now and I'm going to ask you some questions. 
hope you're learning those vocabulary words so that when you come across them, you know what they mean and you can actually use them in speech. Oh, you can learn them in everyday speech. Mom, dad, did you know that down in the town today, there were some people, there was much havoc. Well, hopefully there wasn't havoc, but <laughs> you could use them in everyday speech, you know. Uh, maybe someone was being idle, you know. Uh, someone was being slothful, you know. Oh, I saw the brute. I saw the brute. Or um, you just, I took a haphazard view. Hmm. Anyway, you were to read about the story of Mark Twain and how he got his name. Did you do that? Hopefully, I assume you did. What was the name of the steamship Sam Clemens took down the Mississippi River? And it was called the... It was called the Paul Jones. The Paul Jones. So Mark Twain's real name is what? Samuel Clemens. His name was Samuel. Samuel Clemens. Why did Sam go to New Orleans? or New Orleans. Why did Sam go to New Orleans or New Orleans, whichever way you wish to pronounce it? And what do you think is the answer to that one? Right? He wanted to find a ship, didn't he? And there in New Orleans, he'd take this ship all the way to South America. And because he really wanted to explore the Amazon River, didn't he? Yes. Number three. How much did Sam agree to pay to learn to be a river pilot? A river pilot, you know, one that drives a ship, or sails a ship. He agreed to pay how much? $500. It's a lot of money, especially back then. Number four, where did the name Mark Twain come from? And this was a key question to what the thrust of the story, what, or at least a Part of it was where did the name Sam or I'm sorry Sam Clemens was his name but his pen name later was Mark Twain where did that name come from well when the river was 12 feet deep the measurement the leadsman called out when the river was that deep was Mark Twain Mark Twain. Number five. Why do you think Sam's teacher was so hard on him? He knew, remember he's learning how to do this ship, right? He knew that if he wasn't hard on him and he made a careless mistake, you know, he could wreck the boat. So he had to be hard on him so he'd learn not to do certain things. And you know, they'd lose expensive cargo on the ship and it would just be really bad. Now, he might even kill a passenger. So he had to be very strict, and very hard on him not because he didn't like him, but because he, he cared about him, about all the cargo and about all the people and how important it really is. And your teachers that are hard on you, love you and want what's best for you. Your parents that are hard on you, love you and want what's best for you. I've heard it said the people that are hardest on you love you the most. And I believe that, that in most cases that is true. Well, there was also Ahoy there that you read, and then you started this other story. So I want you to finish this story that you see here, parts of it. You're on page, what, 300, in the 360 range, wherever you left off there, to 366. And uh, you will read, what I'd like you to do is simply finish this book, all right? And, um, you know, our time is going to end with our, our video lessons. Um, however, stay tuned for a couple more videos I'll make. Uh, just to tell you some things, and they won't be long, they'll be shorter, and they won't be instructional videos, but they will just be chatting with you, 
telling a few few more things and then I'll also make a few shorter videos um, just for those that want to learn some more um, if you like but what I would say at this point is this summer finish this book and uh, parents if you're watching and you want your your children to still be learning some things this summer not forgetting things or still want to read uh, summer reading programs uh, they could finish there's only a little bit left but finish the, the book and read the stories and I think you'll enjoy that there's some good things there and then all summer long I want you to be reading books find books you love and read 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 well let's do some language now repeat after me she has lain down for a nap that's right the lamb lay down beside the stream Let me grab this the lamb lay down beside the stream it was lying here a minute ago repeat after me when i say it your book is lying on the floor spot always lies there on the rug jerry likes to lay his book there that is where it should be lying the cat is lying on the driveway lay the music on the piano the dog has been lying on my bed and again uh, i just want you to keep hearing that so that you'll get it right in your mind in your in your head so that you know those things let me ask you a few review things before we do our page for today these are things you need to, to take with you and remember as you go on to fifth grade and beyond you will need to know these lists all right i want you to say the state of being verbs say them am is are was were be being been the helping verbs have has had do does did shall will should would may might must can could these are all being and helping verbs they help a main verb or in some sentences there's simply a being verb uh, the first list was that how about another list pronouns you need to know what a pronoun is when you see it in a sentence, and you should know by now what that is. What are the subjective pronouns, the ones that are subjects? Say it with me. I, you, he, she, it, we, they. I, you, he, she, it, we, they. How about the objective pronouns? Me, you, him, her, it, us, them. Those are subjective, I'm sorry, objective pronouns. So they're not the subject. Me, you, him, her, it, us, them. How about the possessive pronouns? Possessive mean they show ownership. My, mine, your, yours, his, her, hers, its, our, ours, their, theirs. Do you get them? Those are all pronouns that you should know. Okay? So those are the pronoun lists. You should be able to know a pronoun when you see it, that it is a pronoun. Remembering that the possessive ones, like the my and the his and the hers and all of those, theirs, are adjectives when coming before a noun. His book. A pronoun adjective all right the prepositions ready aboard about above across after against along among around at before behind below beneath beside between beyond by down doing except for from in, inside into like near above off on over past since through throughout to toward under, underneath, until, up, upon, with, within, without, 
upon with within without did i say them all right over past since through throughout to toward under underneath until up upon with within without make sure you got all of them can you pick those out in a sentence and know that that's a preposition now when you are finding the subject remember cross out prepositional phrases remember that as you go forward in your learning when you find a subject cross out the prepositional phrases and then you found the verb right and then you find the subject right that what is doing that action or who is doing the action and do that then we did adjectives and adverbs what are the adjective questions which one what kind how many how much whose good what are the adverb questions where when how how often to what extent that's right now we're going to be looking uh, at you're going to do page 264 the last page to do in your book but before you do that not yet look at page 263 there's something i want to go over with you with that i want to say a few things about that and then you'll do your page all right now let me show you something in your book i want you to see you see these here a simple subject is a compound subject is a simple verb is do you know these be ready to complete these definitions when your teacher calls on you. So, I want you to tell me this, Michael. A simple subject is. What is a simple subject? A simple subject is the main word or words that tell who or what the sentence is about. That's what you should have said. Look. A simple subject is the main word or words that tell who or what the sentence is about. Okay. Look at number two. What is a compound subject? You saw the answer. What is a compound subject, Alice? There's two or more. What? Subjects connected to the same verb, right? A compound subject is two or more connected subjects that have the same verb. They're connected by a conjunction, aren't they? And, but, or, nor, for, yet usually and it's the most common one number three emma a simple verb is what a simple verb and of course the simple verb is a verb is the main the simple verb is the main verb and the predicate that says something about the subject. It's the main verb, okay? It's just one. What about a compound verb? And here it is, let's just all say this one. A compound verb is two or more connected verbs that have the same subject, okay? So compound subject, two or more that has the same verb. Compound verb, two or more that has the same subject connected together. And then number five, a sentence. What is a sentence? Class, let's all say it. A sentence is a group of words that expresses a complete thought. You should know that. I want you to memorize that one. A sentence is a group of words that expresses a complete thought. That's going from the beginning of the year. So you should know those too. And then 
Did you do these above each word? Did you get them correct? Let's do them. Now came the fall of the year. Notice, when did it come? Now, adverb. Let's go over the next ones. Two, adverb. About, they danced about. They danced where? About, means they went around bouncing, right? Wind caught them so that they danced about, right? And here's where, it's telling where. That, that term, the, the way they use that word about, about, the word about can be used in different ways. You know, I read a book about this. That's different, okay? That's just a preposition. But this, is it modifying the verb? It's where they danced, right? So it's an adverb. Then you go on. Look, there's another one. Could freeze fast. Could freeze how? Fast. I wrote a note here to make sure that we go over those together. But we wouldn't forget to do that. That's why that's there. And then look, let's keep going. You also did what? Little duckling. What kind of duckling? Little adjective. Not. The word not is an adverb. If you see the word not, it's an adverb. So don't forget that. Did you get that right? Did you label that correctly? Adverb. I'm sorry, adjective. What kind of style? Which one? What kind? How many? Who's? What kind of style? Fine style. It's modifying the noun. So it's an adjective. The whole flock. What kind of flock? Whole flock. Adjective. Great. Handsome birds. What kind of birds? Handsome birds. Adjective. Number nine, strange cry. What kind of cry? Strange cry. That's the adjective. So what is very? Adverb. Very is another one of those words. If you see very, adverb. If you see not, adverb. If you see no, adverb. Right? Not. Very. Right? Those words, just mark it down, they're adverbs. Just memorize the word very. Memorize the word no. Memorize the word not as adverbs. There's certain words, they're just going to be adverbs. Great wings, what kind of wings? Great wings, okay? Open lakes, what kind of lakes? Open lakes. Strange feeling. A strange feeling. Feeling is a noun, right? It's a thing. What kind of feeling? A strange feeling. And uh, this was written by Hans Christian Andersen, the great fairy tale storyteller. He would tell stories. He's known uh, very much for the, the ugly duckling and writing that story. In the blank, write the abbreviation for the part of speech with the underlying word. What kind of box? Iron box, adjective. Iron is, now it's a noun. Did you get that right? Noun. Again, we're on page 263. Work never hurts anyone. Now, did, did you put verb for that work? Look, iron's a verb in number three. Did you iron this? Like you took an iron and ironed it, something you do. Work never, but it's a noun. Work never hurts anyone. What never hurts? Work. Now it's a thing. His math work. Sheet. What kind of sheet? Work sheet. Now it's an adjective. It's modifying the word sheet. Work on Saturdays. Now you're it's something you do, so it's a verb. Raise your hand if you've gotten all of these right. Good job for you if you did. Mr. Briggs is near, a near relative. What kind of relative? Near relative, see? So it's an adjective. Winter draws near. Where? 
near. It's telling where, so it's adverb. Where, when, how, how often, to what extent? Adverb question. We found it where? Near the brook. Now, is there an object to the preposition? Yes. Is this on your preposition list? So we write preposition. Even though you might think, well, near tells where, we're going to write preposition. If there wasn't an object, then we would write adverb because it would be used as an adverb. Does that make sense? Do you understand that? I hope so. The inside of the house was smoky. Now, inside of the house was smoky. They put noun there, and that you might be very tricky because inside is a preposition, isn't it? But what was inside of the house? And that was tricky because it is, yes, this is a prepositional phrase, but there isn't anything else that could be the subject. What was smoky? The inside of the house. Remember, you, you don't say house because that's in a prepositional phrase. See the word inside here? That's tricky. But of is the preposition because that's the preposition with the noun coming after it. You see that? Of the house. That's the preposition. And that may be something that could have thrown some people. That would, I had to actually stop and think about that one. Well, you know, inside's a preposition, isn't it? But do you see this preposition of? is with the noun. That's your prepositional phrase. I could put parentheses around that, couldn't I? And then inside wouldn't have an object, would it? So it's just the place. It's a person, place, or thing. It's a place. What was smoky? Inside was smoky. So it is a noun. Mm. It was in his inside pocket. What kind of pocket? Inside. Now, inside is an adjective, even though it is a preposition on your preposition list. Be careful. How is it used? Theoretically, just about any word can be used as just any, any part of speech. How is it used in the sentence? What kind of pocket? Inside pocket, you see? In order for it to be a preposition, it's like number 12, inside the gate. There's an object, yes, it's a preposition. Inside, inside pocket, it's, it didn't say inside the pocket, right? He found it inside his pocket, you know, then that would. So you got to really think on those. I know those aren't easy. Did you go outside or inside? Did you go inside? Why is it an adverb? Don't just say it's an adverb. Why is it an adverb? Can you tell me why it's an adverb? Is there an object? No. So it's telling you, you go, you did go, where? Inside. Notice it's an inverted sentence because it is what? Interrogative. It's asking a question. And so often, on an interrogative sentence with a question mark, be looking for an inverted verb where the verb, uh, the helping verb and main verb aren't right next to each other. Then there's gonna be a word in between because did starts the question. See, did go is the verb. Subject, you. Did you, did go where? Inside, it's where, when, how, how often, to what extent? Adverb, it's answering the adverb question. So that covers that. Do page 264. We did, we went over page 263. Now do page 264. We've gone over these answers for you. Well, I hope that you have enjoyed our language time this year. I hope you've learned a lot. I hope that you will take this with you and not forget what you've learned. And you do your best, even on today's page. Please do do it and uh, do a super job. And these review pages are, are pages you can go back and look at even throughout the summer if you want to, if you're wanting to be maybe right before school, you know, some parents like to do that with 
uh, your child, those if you parents that might be listening to this, and if you're a student now listening to this, look at the back, see how you have this handbook? You can review your terms. Maybe there was something you didn't do as well on and you wanna go back over, you're welcome to do that. There's a handbook in the back with some basic terms. Even if you lost a page, you can hopefully find it there. I have enjoyed teaching this to you so much. I say goodbye to Mr. Dictionary. Goodbye. Be looking for another video because I'm not quite done. There will be a few concluding videos for the end of the year, but as far as your work, this will conclude our book. We were able to finish it and you take care. And again, learn something new every day and look for a few more videos. Bye for now.